Okay guys, for operation of the KLN89 Bravo, first you want to have the battery on, the avionics master on. It should normally be on, but if it's not, just flip this button right here to on. Uh, this is the data card. Here's your cursor button. Down here across the bottom, what you have, these are uh, what you can consider like direct functionality. And then these labels here do not associate with the buttons. Those are called chapters. We'll show you that in a second. When you boot it on, it's going to go through its self-test. And then here at the beginning, it's going to talk about, uh, it's going to go through a test. It's going to just tell you some uh, errors. Don't worry about the no altitude input. That's just because it's not picking up the transponder yet. Okay, here it gives you a reference. And as you can see, here's your where it shut down last. That's the, uh, the uh, waypoint. But more importantly, easierly, you can look at, it's going to look at the closest airport, which it says is North Las, Ve North Las Vegas. And it says we're actually 208 for zero nautical miles. So we're on it. And that's where we are. Here's when the database expires. The key important part about this is you cannot fly IFR or a check ride with the expired database. So make sure that is updated. And then you just hit enter to acknowledge those. Okay, when you first come up this screen right here, as it's warming up, it gives you a flag. That's the same as a red flag that you would have in any other device. That says it's not operational for navigation right now. And that's either because it's booting up or because you do not have a uh, steer point cleared into it. So it has messages here, right? We're gonna just acknowledge those. Okay, yep, it's just giving us warnings about the uh, sewer, and we already talked about the altitude fill. Now, for example, if I wanted to go to closest to, uh, to uh, back to uh, North Las Vegas, I would just hit nearest, and it goes, hey, where do you want to go to? Nearest airport, hit enter, and then nearest airport, hit enter. Or direct to, gives me a direct to function, and hit enter. Okay, now on this screen, this is your basic nav one page. What that means is, see this cursor here? That means you're in the nav chapter and you're on page one. So nav chapter, page one. From left to right, this is your distance from the center point off the airfield facility director for North Las Vegas, your 0.3 nautical miles. Here's the ground speed. You're in leg mode, which is basically like a GPS, think it's gonna give you direct to guidance versus OBS mode, which is, uh, uh, bearing, omni bearing steering, so turning into like a VOR. It's giving us a message, so we'll clear that out by hitting the message button and saying, hey, for direct two, set your course to this. And then make sure you set your uh, barometric altimeter. So how you do that is you just hit this altimeter button right here. You hit that. And then today, the altimeter is 3010. So we'll use the inner knob to dial 3010. And when we're done, we simply hit cursor to take the cursor off there, and then we can roll back to our nav page. Over here, it's giving us a direct to KVGT. If we were going on a flight plan with routes, it would say the route, the point we're leaving, so on the approach, it would give you the point you're leaving with an arrow to the point you're going to. This is your standard, just like the VOR, your HSI, this is your standard CDI right there. That's the direct track to the point we're going to. That's the track we're currently doing. Well, because we're sitting still, it has no track for us. And this is the time until we get to the point. If this is telling you what you should set your steer to, to on your uh, CDI or your HSI needle. Now, how we fly an approach is very easy. So now you've had this all set up, you're ready to go. So after you start the motors, because this happens, it'll clear itself out after the uh, GPS is shut down. After you start the motors and you've cleared everything out with the self-test, you're going to take the outer knob here, so the outer knob, and you're gonna roll it to the airport chapter. Okay, once you're on the airport chapter, you go, yeah, VGT, that's where I am, that's what I want, and I'm gonna take the inner knob, and I'm gonna go counterclockwise one time, so I'm on page eight of the airport chapter. And as you can see right here, I have two instrument approach options. So to put my cursor on the screen, I'm going to select cursor, put it on the one that I want, which for here in North Las Vegas, we do the GPS one, two, right? I'm going to hit enter and it's asking me do I want to add that to the flight plan with the initial approach fix of Sequoia and I go enter to acknowledge yes it replaced existing approach yes and now it does now what you've seen that it has done is it will put you in the leg of the approach where it thinks you're closest to which in this case we're sitting on the airfield so it puts us at the final point which is the airfield now what we're going to be doing however is we're going to set it up for the initial approach fix so it's already preset for when we're in the airspace. And how we're gonna do that, there's two ways to do that. From this screen on the flight plan page, we simply hit cursor and we roll counterclockwise with the outer knob and just keep rolling counterclockwise. 
until we get to the waypoint we want to start at, which for today's case usually is going to be Sequoia, which is the initial approach fix. So when we have that highlighted, we're going to hit the direct to function. Direct to, and I acknowledge that with hitting enter. And now you'll see it's like the direct to Sequoia. The other way that I can do this is on the flight plan page, or on the uh, nav page four. So we're nav page one, two, three, four. This is the moving map page. It gives you no display right now because we're not moving. However, in flight, it will draw out the approach course. So it's a really good reference as to where you are in the approach course. Now, let's say we're on this page right here, moving map, you're going towards a hold, and suddenly Clarence or your uh, examiner says, you know what, take me to uh, uh, Kimmy instead, and we'll start the approach from Kimmy. The easiest way to do this from this page is you're going to take this inner knob, and you're going to pull it out. When you pull it out, you get the waypoint options here. And now with the inner knob pulled out, you can rotate this to whatever point you want. So you'll notice a small letter after it tells you what that point is. This is the final approach fix. That's the missed approach point. But we're going to go to the intermediate point of Kimmy. Now we highlight that right there. We're going to hit direct to Kimmy, enter, and we get back to this page. We push this back in, and then it changes our guidance to Kimmy. So if we go back to nav page one, you'll see we're going direct to Kimmy. Now, when we change waypoints, we'll get a message. And if you notice over here, you also get a message annunciator alert. You hit message, and it goes, hey, if you want to go direct to Kimmy, set your course to 325, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to set my CDI to 325. We already know we set our altimeter, and any altitude fail we can ignore for now, because that's just because of the transponder. Okay, and then to get back, I simply just roll with either, any of the knobs back to nav, page one. Now when flying the approach, if you look here it says armed. If I have an approach in the flight plan when it sees that I'm 30 miles from the airfield, it will go from normal course guidance to approach armed. So what that does within 30 miles, you need to make sure before you start the approach that it says armed. And what that means is your CDI deflection either on your HSI or here versus being five nautical miles plus or minus five nautical miles wide like it is in course mode it's going to be plus or minus one nautical mile wide. The other key part to that is for us to actually fly the approach, we have to see this go from arm to active, like that. And that will happen when it sees that we are two miles from the final approach fix, approaching the final approach fix. Before starting the approach, it has to say active. And what that means is now the course guidance has gone from one, plus or minus one mile to plus or minus 0.3 miles. For that to happen, a few conditions have to exist. One, the approach has to be loaded. Two, you have to be in leg mode. Three, the approach has to be armed, which it does automatically. And then four, it has to, it'll do a calculation of RAM and approach quality to make sure that the, it will be able to maintain guidance throughout. So when you start the approach at the funnel approach fix, it'll say active. As you're flying the approach, it will automatically click between approaches or between waypoints in the approach, as well as you will see the waypoint message flash on the enunciator when you're 20 seconds from the waypoint. And then you will, when the CDI starts giving you deviation, you turn to maintain on course and then set your next course for the following course. Once you hit the final approach fix, if you're going to go missed approach, or once you hit missed approach fix, you're going to go missed approach, it will not auto sequence that. You'll have to hit the direct button. It will auto have that as the next fix. Hit enter. Now, most missed approaches require you to be in OBS, so Omni Bearing Steering, like tracking a TACAN, require you to be in OBS. So at that point, you will have to go over here and select from leg, you hit the OBS button and hit OBS. So instead of having direct to guidance, what that does is when I set a course here in my, here in my HSI, it will automatically set that radial and it'll give me guidance for flying that radial inbound. So when you're going to a hold, either on a missed approach or a hold, intermediate hold, and you want to hold, for example, off of Kimmy, what I would do is I would set, so if I'm holding off the 180 radial from Kimmy, left-hand turns, I know that my inbound leg is 360. So I would set that 360 in here, and then that will give me, just like a tack in, guidance to Kimmy. If I subsequently want to start the approach, I have to go and hit this button and make sure it's on leg, and then it will auto sequence to the next point. So if we're on OBS, 
I set my inbound, I fly it as normal. The other function you can use is on the moving map when you're going to a hold, this is a great page because if you're an OBS with a radial set, it will draw that line on your moving map. And so it's very easy, you'll see your aircraft, you'll see the line, it is very easy to determine what your entry is gonna look like and what your left turn turns will look like. Now the other function that we can do with this, with this GPS is we can use this as a backup to a normal approach. So if I'm flying the ILS here at North Las Vegas, which requires DME, which I have on this function, but if that goes dead, I wanna have a backup. And how I do that is I simply go direct, and then now I dial in the localizer name, which here it's India Hotel Whiskey Golf. So using the inner knob, I dial India, I step to the next line with the outer knob, hotel, whiskey, golf. And then once that's entered, I hit enter. It goes, hey, is this where you want to go? Here's where you are, reference to it. Yep, that's the place. Hit enter again. Now you have direct to guidance. Okay? And then right here now, you'll get your DME from that point. So you can use that as a backup to your actual DME in case that is lost.